All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to my talk. Um, my name is David. I'm an engineer at Meta on the Linux kernel team. Um, so the name of the talk is Checking Your Work, Linux Kernel Testing in CI, but I actually really want to discuss K-Self-Test more than CI. I'm sure we'll talk about that, too, given the last talk. Before I do, can I just get a quick show of hands of who is like intimately familiar with K-Self-Test and understands what is involved with building a K-Self-Test suite? Okay, so I'll go over it in some, some detail. This is the basic agenda. I think the really interesting discussion is going to be starting at two when we talk about like fundamentally what is K-Self-Test, what do we want out of the framework? Um, feel free to interrupt me. I would just ask, it might be nice to get through like the mechanics of what K-Self-Test is before we have too much discussion, but it's fine. Feel free to interrupt you know, <laughs> at any time. Okay, so let's start with what is K-Self-Test. So fundamentally, in my opinion, it's a flexible testing framework for validating the kernel. Um, it's called fle it's flexible because really, I think at the end of the day, K-Self-Test is basically a way that lets you write uh, user space programs that um, validate kernel functions, or not kernel functions, but kernel behavior, and then outputs it in KTAP format, as we discussed. Um, this is where it's located. Um, many different subsystems are tested, um, all use them slightly differently, some very differently, like RCU torture, as you mentioned. Um, this is an example of a make file um, in a case self test suite. Um, this is really all you actually need to define a case self test suite. Uh, if you see here, you have test progs, which are instances of executable files that don't need to be compiled, but are instances of test cases. And then test gen progs are um, make file targets that are compiled when the test suite is built that do need to be built in order to be run. Um, so this is all you need. This is the C group K self test make file. Um, yeah, and these are the, uh, the two. So uh, this is an instance of the live patch one. These are all shell scripts. Um, the live patch uh, self test suite relies on um, modules to be inserted. Uh, live patch, live patches are actually just special instances of kernel modules. So um, those aren't really encoded in the self test suite, but those are required in order for this test to have semantic meaning. And then RCU torture, like we mentioned, is just a make target that runs um, a test suite that was basically built by Paul McKenney and is specific to RCU torture. So they're all slightly different. They all have kind of different semantics and different requirements. Um, and that's something that I want to discuss uh, while we go through the presentation. Um, another thing I want to mention is that case self-tests can be built, installed, and run, meaning that you can specify a list of self-tests that you want to build, and then case self-tests will provide you semantics for packaging those tests together, right, uh, spitting out a test runner that can run the test cases that are part of those, those test suites, and then you can um, you can run those yourself. I know this is tiny. Don't have to worry about the specifics. But basically, you install it this way. K self test uh, outputs this directory here, which is the install directory, which has a runner and the list of targets um, that you wanted to run for your test suite. And then you can run it by executing the runner. And the runner just just walks over all the test the test cases and, and uh, executes them. Um, another thing I want to mention is that you can specify requisite k-config options in k-self-test. And one of the things I want to discuss is that uh, this is really more of a convention, I would say. So for k-self-test, you can advertise, I need these config options to run. Like, for example, for live patch, you need config live patch. You need config dynamic debug and, you know, the modules for the test live patch. But um, this isn't really part of the build system for k-self-test. It's really more just a signal to somebody that wants to run the test. This is how you run them. And so with all that in mind, um, I want to take a step back and look at case self test and consider what do we want out of this test, this test runner and this test framework, and um, can it be extended to, to, to provide more value to people? So it was actually originally designed for ad hoc usage. The first commit that added it said it was basically just a place for people to dump test cases that were bit rotting on some maintainer server. Um, let's put them in a specific, you know, in one place that's in the tree so that they can, they can actually sit there and be useful to people. And the only requirement was that you had to put a run test make target in the make file and you had to add that to uh, a root make file in the self test directory. And, and basically the contract was to do this and we'll run it for you when you run this make target. Um, there wasn't really any imposition of, of structure on what these tests would do. I don't think there was even uh, a uh, an imposition on like the output. I think KTAP came quite a bit later. Um, and that philosophy is no longer true in the sense that K self test has evolved. Now you do output tests, test output does uh, 
is done in KTAP format. There's some expectation that tests will tell you if they've passed, failed, or skipped in a certain way. Um, you can specify test cases in the make file as opposed to just a single target that's a, you know opaque thing for what it does, and they can be packaged and installed. Um, but there isn't a common expectation for configuration. And one thing that I've noticed, at least when I was using k-self-test, is you often, despite the fact that there is a common way to build the test and run the test, you still kind of have to be a little bit of an expert um, in certain subsystems, at least, to be able to, to know how to run it. Um, for example, uh, I don't know, many, many test suites don't use test progs. It's probably not true, because I know that RC Torture doesn't. Um, but, so, yeah. Oh. I would not use RC Torture as one of the examples because it's not even in the make file. If you look at the default targets, RC Torture does, does not show up in the targets. Okay. Um, it does, does not, and RC Torture was never intended to be part of actually included in K self test. It doesn't run. If you run K self test by default, RCU torture does not run. So it needed to be ported, and we haven't actually done that. So I okay. would, that has to happen before, uh, before RCU torture can be run using K self test. So that's, that's a fair, that's a fair point. There are other test suites, I would argue, that are, that are, I think, more canonical K self test suites that do a little bit of their own scaffolding, like at least BPF, for example. It BPF does. is another uh, exception example, partly because um, it uses, it needs um, uh, emulation. I mean, it, it, it's so, well, it's a little bit different. This, so, okay, agreed on that. So it's one, also not part of default, by the way. Well, that is true. But I think the, the one of the things I would argue is that a lot of these tests actually could benefit from some of the same infrastructure that something like BPF or RC Torture would. So right. for example, sorry. That is absolutely true. Yeah. What I'm saying is this is one of, this has just been one of those things to do things that has to happen. BPF is slightly different. It also has a dependency on Clang, um, another um, LVM and LLVM and Clang. So for that reason, um, if we were to include that in default, it can be included in the default. It just runs if you were to have the right things installed. However, we're not including it in default for a reason because okay. all, uh, a lot of the environment like EMU, uh, virtual environments, people want to just use very minimal set of tools. So yeah. you have to yeah. have a lot of tools to be able to run. And if you do have them, you can configure it to not run. So I, I think I would, uh, go ahead, Guillaume. No, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. So I think I, I agree with you. I, I think I would say that, that the issue of missing dependencies or all these things are, at least from what I've seen, pretty common. And I wouldn't use the word ubiquitous, but I've seen it in a lot of the in a lot of the test suites. Like for example, for VM, you have to have, um, did you want, are you just okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, microphone. I'll just quickly say, oh. <laughs> for VM, you also yeah. need to have libcap developed to be able to run some of the tests in like 32-bit glibc yeah. libraries, at least headers, so. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the difference, so I was the one who did the patch to take BPF out of the default. The, the difference of the BPF uh, dependencies compared to most of the other things was that it's not just you need to install a library, which you could probably get from your distro. It was you need a bleeding edge version of Clang and, very, and maybe some other bits. So it, it was um, hard to even, or not, it, it was a lot of work to satisfy the dependencies and it was a very, very moving target. Whereas for most of the rest of case health test, um, it, yes, you need to go and work out what libraries to install. We, could, we should do a better job of documenting that. But it's um, something you can probably just install from your distro and it's reasonably tractable. I, I agree, though. I would say I think um, if you generalize the problem to what does this test case, what capabilities does this test case need? I think I think it's a general thing. I agree. I mean, BPF is special. Like you need literally the latest hash of the master branch of LLVM for certain features. You need like latest PA hole. It's not the same as something like I need a 32-bit header for doing some VM thing. But it would be nice if you could say for this test case, I need this capability for that one. I don't. And have some. So have you checked the check dependency script yet? No, Under I the, not. Yeah. Go ahead, and that's exactly what it does. Okay. Check dependency. Uh, uh, script under a case of test directory. I just I wrote it because I was struggling with the same things. Okay. So it'll if you were to give the architecture, 
and your, it'll analyze your test system. It'll run on your test system and say, these are the libraries that are missing and you have to load them to be able to run full case okay. of test fully. Okay, that would be interesting. I think it would still be nice to be able to encode that in the test configuration so that you can have CI systems and stuff use it too, but. So it could be it could be added to run, um, uh, to case of test run itself. Um, but I haven't done that. I left it out uh, because I didn't want to include it in the case of. So check that out and see what it can do for you. And if there is anything that you want to add to that, just send me that. Just okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that sounds good. Um, and you can also specify a specific architecture, and it will tell you if you were to cross compile. It will also tell you what is needed for a cross compile environment. Sounds good. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about config later, but for now, I want to take a step back and ask what other, you know, in general, what else should case self test be able to do? Like, so for example, for RCU torture, um, Paul's script, which I know is separate and we're going to port it, but Paul's script um, builds the kernels that you need in various configurations. It runs RCU torture modules with certain numbers of CPUs and, and RAM configurations and stuff like that. I think RCU torture, and this actually might be the next slide. Um, yeah, so this one, uh, sorry, I was planning on this <laughs> staking last time. Um, for me, I found that it's quite challenging often to run, uh, to like iterate with case self test because um, I'm, you know, I think a lot of people as well are doing most of their testing on VMs. So for me, I compile the kernel. I have to make sure that the config options from uh, the case self test suite are there. You boot into the VM with the mounted volume shared from the host, and then you you run the case self test after you after you've you know installed them. Um, so some of these, in general, you know, the point that I guess I really want to discuss is that I think a lot of these um, these features, you know, BPF has multiple architecture support, and they have a way of specifying which test cases work on S390X, which ones work on x86. Do we want to go into some of these these um, these subsystems and pull these features out into common a common part of of K self test? So that's something like kernel CI or uh, or um, patchwork, which is what BPF uses can really use this, you know, as we were talking about in the last presentation, right? Like you as somebody that isn't an expert in this subsystem should be able to just onboard it onto your CI system, hopefully without knowing what it's doing, right? You as a developer, tell me what I need to do to run your test suite. It seems like um, in general, maybe pulling some of that out and making it a common case self-test feature would be, would be warranted. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Couple of uh, things. I, I'm not. I don't know if I fully understand what uh, case of some of the case of this case of this do have different architecture support, right? So breakpoints would be one example. So the case self tests. Um, oh, sorry, I, I forget where this is, but there's you can only specify a single config file, right? Ah, uh, I see. This, so so for, you're talking about just the config file part. Yeah. So like obviously config x eighty six sixty four is mutually exclusive of config arm sixty four. So, but, but that support is built into some of the, the, the self-test suites, right? I know it is for, for BPF, it might be for, actually for VM it is as well, because I know that they skip certain test cases if they don't have enough RAM or if they're, you know, running on an architecture that doesn't have like five level page tables or something like that. So, um, you know, I guess in general, like my, what I've observed from case self-test is that it's great in that it's, it's aggregated all of these disparate test suites into a common format for output. Um, a common format for packaging, and do we want to take it a step further and say this is also a common format for configuration? It's a common format for running um, across any config or any architecture, and also will help you run it in a VM and we'll build it for you locally. So it can kind of function more like KDE in that regard as well. Absolutely, Co configuration is has always been a little bit weak. Uh, one of the other things I would say is, in addition to configuration, the other things to look at is. Um, when you're testing a particular syscall, for example, system mm -hmm. call, and it depends on the features enabled as well yeah. and the flags. So one of the things that um, that case self test uh, when when we thought about the framework, one of the things we thought about is because you won't be able to even configuration is easier to manage in some ways. Mm -hmm. So you can say the feature uh, is supported or not, and then it always does a skip and it tells you why it's skipping. So that part, um, that's a bug if it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, if a test is not doing that, it's a bug. So other things is that features is the harder part because features um, still need to be able to run um, 
even if a configuration option is not supported or configuration is not option is not enabled or feature is not supported. That's the whole idea. So we can definitely configuration part um, needs uh, it's a couple to do. Even even if uh, you build the case of test with that any configuration option enabled, you have to have the kernels supporting it. So there's two parts to it, right? You have to have the what supporting it. I'm sorry. Kernel enabling that option. Okay, like a syscall enabled or something like that. Um, well, I mean any configuration option. Sure. It could be oh, okay. you know any random configuration option or even a kernel having a particular based on the revision. If if uh, six dado implements a new uh, flag you know, on a system call, that might not be available on. 5.19. Mm -hmm. So the test still needs to run without modifications. Um, it should be able to run on older kernels. It would be, wouldn't it be nice if the person, if the maintainer that wrote the test cases was advertising to you what was capable, just in like the way that like case self test forces you to express what this test case can do and what it requires as part of like how it's configured instead of having a config file where um, you basically have to have all or nothing for, for the test suite to work. Well, hey, it's in the kernel uh, tree for that reason. Yeah, that yeah. We can make changes the way we want. So developers and, and users also. So yeah, I mean, why not? All right, that's why we have LPC. Everybody can, be, uh, can, can get on the same page. Yeah. So, I suspect there may be a philosophical question here that's worth tackling head on, which is, some users of case self tests may want to have a single config and then they can run all of the tests across multiple configs, multiple subsystems in one go. A subsystem developer might want a unique config to test their subsystem, which may be mutually exclusive with other subsystems, or in the case of RC torture, have a series of configs that they want just for that one subsystem. And that is that tension with the people who want to comprehensively run lots of subsystems with a single standardized config. I suspect those two will always be in tension and you'll have some compromise between the two, but like that's the reality, that's right? The reality. <laughs> so, so the reality is the case of this um, is, uh, I, I have done this for the days before, what is it? It's the developer test suite, primarily, where developers write tests and be able to run. That's why if you notice, it is supports quite a bit of us. Mm -hmm. Being able to just go into the test directory and run that, just make run tests in that directory, like here. And so, yes, there is going to be push and pull between uh, what users want from it, what developers want from it. From it. So we have, a, we, well, we waited more towards ease, ease of use of developers. We are moving it towards users where um, they sometimes those, that is it, that sometimes um, those are the, at odds. It can be, they can be at odds. Having said that though, I do see the need to uh, improve the config part of it. We don't, we have individual tests supported um, and then they do the right thing, but yes. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you very much,